everybody, this is Nicole with the Diana Initiative, and we're back with our Hacker Summer Camp Guide. This time we have the Nautilus Institute with us. Can you introduce yourself? Uh, yes, uh, I'm Vito. I'm uh, a member of Nautilus Institute, and we've been organizing DEF CON Capture the Flag since uh, 2022. So this past year, 2024, was our third time running it. And I believe we're planning on running it in 2025. Okay, so if I'm new, what is a Capture the Flag competition? So there are a lot of Capture the Flag contests at DEF CON. And I would say that the, the common thread among them is you're getting into some kind of system and trying to extract a flag from it. Uh, there's a so, there has been a social engineering Capture the Flag where you're trying to get into uh, somebody who's running a phone system and trick them or convince them to release some piece of information. Uh, there, I, there might be like an industrial control system. And there's a bunch of these events. Uh, the one we run, which is simply called DEF CON Capture the Flag, is uh, one of the older contests at DEF CON. And the systems you're breaking into are binary software generally run by other teams. Uh, we call it a attack defense capture the flag contest with a heavy focus on binaries and reverse engineering. Oh, wow. That sounds really fun. So you're kind of having to play both sides of the field in this game against a number of other teams. How do those teams end up there at DEF CON? So we have a, uh, we generally have at least two different events to qualify for our contest. Uh, because it's a attack defense competition, there's a incredible amount of infrastructure that goes into that. Uh, we have limited space in the room. We have uh, we actually host the uh, team machines that they're trying to attack and defend, and we only have a finite number of switch ports. So traditionally, the team that won the previous year, which uh, in 2023 were the Maple Mallard Magistrates, they automatically qualify for the next year. Uh, in addition, or I guess in 2024 they won as well. Uh, we also this year we have at least one. Uh, ex like outside contest. Uh, I believe it's the HitCon Capture the Flag, uh, which are going to their finals in November of 2024. Uh, and then in the spring, we have our own qualifiers, which is a free online Jeopardy style Capture the Flag contest open to anybody in the world. Oh, wow. So if somebody is interested in this, maybe they could play some Jeopardy style CTFs to get ready, get a team together, and then they can go ahead and participate in that open contest. Absolutely. And the nice thing about Jeopardy style capture the flag contests, even ones that are binary focused, they are actually relatively common online. Uh, I know PPP or MMM, uh, they're basically the same team. Uh, they run a plaid CTF event once a year. Uh, there is usually one that goes on during the German uh, chaos communications Congress between Christmas and new year's. Uh, which is also a very convenient time if you take it off work. Uh, but there are a lot of these contests uh, all over the world. Most of them are online and free to play. And they're the best way to practice for our game. So if somebody's really excited and they're like, I totally have time between you know Thanksgiving and New Year, do they need more than just a computer to participate? So I would say that the the computer is most of what you need uh any like our game we very much focus on this is pure software here's a file you download uh, i've definitely played some where we had extra hardware or that extra hardware was required uh, i believe it was at a uh, chaos camp in 2015 you actually had to find a decoded rf signal that was only at camp uh, but most of the time it's you know you can get you can probably get really far with just free open source software on your computer even. Awesome. So it sounds like if I'm new, I'm welcome. What if I'm a kid? Do you have to be an adult to participate in this? Uh, for DEF CON Catch the Flag, we don't actually figure out who's an adult or a kid. Uh, if you're a high school student or younger, uh, I don't think we would stop you from competing. Uh, I would also caveat this with the people who do compete are, uh, I would say, some of the best in the world at this. So if you are 
uh, you know, younger and haven't studied this stuff necessarily for several decades, you may not do as well as some of the other players. But this is a, you know, it's a growing esport. There's a lot of opportunity for growth. And if you do enjoy it, and even if you don't do well, there's lots of space to turn this into longer term study or possibly a career. All right. So they can certainly give it a go. And if they don't make it in the qualifiers, they shouldn't feel bad because they haven't been doing this for long. Now, let's say they don't qualify because I'm sure most people don't qualify because I'm sure you have a lot of people participating in this contest. If they're showing up at DEF CON, is there anything else that you all are running or are they allowed to come watch the competition? Like how could they kind of participate in the CTF even if they're not actually going to be one of the teams that's competing to win? So our space at DEF CON, we do have a few hours of the day where it's only players allowed in. And that's mostly for organizational purposes. That first setup hour, uh, we're trying to make sure all the teams have power and network and they're actually able to connect to the game and everything like that. But once the game kicks off, uh, we generally open up the room to the you know general humanity of DEF CON. Uh, we usually have some kind of scoreboard. A lot of the time there may be people around that are able to explain the game to spectators or talk about it. Uh, and in the past, we've had distraction videos, but we haven't had the uh, team bandwidth on our end to put those together in the last few years. So if anybody's looking to perhaps volunteer, they should reach out and offer their services. Uh, we actually aren't a particularly open organization to volunteering uh, because the challenges are relatively... Uh, we feel that they're high stakes and we try and keep a lid on a lot of things. Uh, as organizers, we're pretty closed off to new people. It's a uh, kind of, we nominate people that we already know and trust. Uh, so it's the, the same way as DEF CON Goon works, where like if you know somebody, you could potentially get kind of a nomination in. Correct, yeah. Uh, but on the flip mode, we won't be organizing the game forever. And there will be an opportunity in the future to put together a team and uh, offer to run it for the entire conference. Which, for anybody who has never run an event, this is a all-year commitment that is a lot of work. So don't take that lightly. Right. Uh, the a previous group organizing I was involved in, Legitimate bin Business Syndicate, uh, we started off where it was a lot of people who were cagey about their jobs or you know were single at the time. And by, by the time they finished, there was a lot of gray hair. There were a lot of, oh, like my name and picture are on a... Uh, on an agency website or, you know, married with kids, that kind of thing. It's a all year commitment. It's not necessarily a, you know, this is your life for the next year, but it's definitely a major part of your life uh, for the duration of the event, uh, which has its ups and downs. Uh, my career is built off of running DEF CON CTF. As someone who runs an event, uh, I, there definitely there are perks, but there are also downsides and, you know, your family has to put up with it. So make sure any partner you have is kind of in on it as well. All right. So uh, hopefully I'm going to be doing interviews with some of the other groups that have CTFs because I know some are open. Uh, so if you kind of get jazzed up and you kind of watch the score and want to participate, there will be CTFs that are run by different villages that you could participate in. Uh, now, do you have like any swag or things that you sell around, like either before the event, during the event, or is this kind of a swag free event? We usually have some kind of stickers to give away at DEF CON. Uh, and in previous years, we've had various things that are mostly kept for uh, players of our game. Uh, one, one of the things we run into just as kind of a tangent is uh, we have to whenever a team has a specific problem with the game, like they need their, you know, computer re-imaged or they, you know, want something kind of semi-destructive like that, we have this idea of a captain's token where the captain of the team is whoever's holding this token and they can make a request on behalf of the team. So we generally, we, you know, always have those. But in the broader scheme of things, our players do like to have, you know, stickers to decorate their, you know, laptops and that kind of thing. So we do bring those to DEF CON, but we don't uh, have a lot to sell necessarily. Uh, because at the end of the day, we're running this contest for fun, involving money, and, 
you know, products and figuring out who gets paid. And Nevada what. wants sales taxes. If you even think about money while you're in the conference center. Right. Yeah. It's, it's so much easier to just give stuff away for free and settle it up inside our group at a later time. So if somebody wants to kind of find out what's going on, do you have like a discord, a website, a social media account, like where should they kind of go to find out about the qualifiers or anything else that's going on? So our website is nautilus.institute. Um, and uh, we do try and keep our uh, Mastodon up to date. We're Nautilus Institute at defcon.social on Mastodon. All right. And kind of any last things you want to share for anybody who's kind of maybe thinking this sounds cool, or I wonder if I should wander in the village when I show up this year. So uh, I'll tell a story from my uh, the run up to my first DEFCON. So we had started a computer security club at our university and in the fall semester and in the run up or kind of the wrap up to the semester, the uh, UC Santa Barbara, uh, their shellfish group ran a, you know, online uh, attack defense CTF. I think it was attack defense for students only. And we were like tossing back and forth about whether as, you know, being an organized club for four months, we were ready for it. And somebody in our group said, well, there's only one way to know if we're good enough to compete, and that's to compete. Uh, so if you're interested at all, put together a team. Uh, we competed. We ca we were really happy that we came in in the top two thirds. <laughs> uh, but we had I mean, for just existing for four months, that sounds pretty awesome to get in the top two thirds. Right, yeah. And, you know, for the uh, DEF CON qualifiers, uh, this was back when Kenshoto was running it. We also came in in the top like half for that the next year. We we're really happy with that. And just walking through the CTF room at DEF CON, it was amazing to see, you know, Kenshoto at the table, you know, working hard to run the game. All these teams, Shellfish, who'd run that first team we played with. And just walking through that room and like never imagining we'd be elite enough, uh, which was the thing you said back then. Uh, you know, to be on that level. And, you know, a decade later, we're running the game. And it's it's a journey. It's a journey you have to commit to. But if you're interested in this stuff, it's a journey you can make. And I think it's a journey worth taking. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us. And I hope everybody's kind of inspired to at least give it a go. Uh, it's not going to cost you anything to at least see where you rank and how much you enjoy it. And thank you for the excellent questions.